Hello everyone, this is Elizabeth with Scott Leroy Marketing and welcome to Lead Generate with Command, Print Marketing 101. Today is December 20th, so if you are viewing the recording, some of the features may have changed. Today I am starting in Google Chrome Incognito, which you can find in the top right corner when clicking on the three dots. And it's the third or first selection there. Next, I am at agent.kw.com, which is command. And I'm going to enter my username, which is generally something like first initial, last name, maybe a number, and password. and click sign in. So this is our command home screen. Yours may look a little different if you've customized these applets. But first step, we're gonna to check to make sure that your marketing profile is complete so that that information can syndicate to your print marketing pieces. So head to your name in the top right corner. Once you select that, click settings. Once settings has loaded, click connect settings on the left-hand side then click marketing profile. This is where you're going to want to upload your headshot, team logo if you have one. If not, leave this blank. There is not an option to remove this, so you can only replace the fields marked with a red asterisk are required. But you just want to come in here, make sure all of the information is accurate and up to date. Then at the very bottom, click save to apply those changes. You should then see the successful pop up, which you can close. Yeah, if your headshot was too large to be uploaded, you can fix that. Um, my favorite way is using Pixlr, which is just a website, P-I-X-L-R.com. And then you can simply click open image. And then there will be an option to crop on the left. And then an option to resize at the top. And command likes the headshots in that specific section to be 360 by 360 pixels. But I will also say if you would like us to update your headshot in all locations, there's about five or six. Email that over to us with your username and password, and we'd be happy to do that for you. I'll go ahead and pop our website in the chat where you can find our contact information at the bottom. Yeah, you're welcome. So now that we have our marketing profile up to date, we're gonna head to designs. Designs is the paintbrush in a square. It's the third applet from the bottom. While you're still learning, you can click the red square with the white KW to expand the name of the applets as well. Once you find it, click designs. And I realize I did not post our website to everyone in the meeting. So there you have it. 
Now, once in designs, again, your screen may look different than mine. And that's because within my account, these are my designs that I've created. Your account will hold your designs that you've created. So just like in any other applet, you want to go to the top right and click Create Design. Again, this is print marketing, so we're going to choose the print option and click Continue. And this applet is the reason we want to be in Google Chrome Incognito. We also find that the WeBrand Design Editor works really well in Mozilla Firefox. So if you're having any issues or if I in the future may have issues, I'll flip over to that browser. So you may want to try that as well. Now, first things first, we're also going to check your assets within the WeBrand Design Editor. That's the last little tab at the very top. And this is where you can house all of the information that you routinely use for designs. So you have color palettes and fonts on this first option here. Under images, this is where you can upload your headshot. You can upload by clicking the upload button at the top right. You can also organize your uploads by adding folders. Under text, this is going to be your frequently used text like email, website, um, app URL, uh, address even, your name, that's a good one. Under logos, this is where you can have market center logos, like I do here, and all of the different color options that are provided by KW. Now, if you need those, you can access those by logging into your MyKW account. And clicking on marketing. This will take you over to KW Connect, where you'll see the first option, the first tile is logos and branding, where you can then search for your market center by number or name about a third of the way down the page. And that's how you get the full suite of logos by clicking that download there and it'll give you all of the different colors. I'll also post this in the chat to take you straight there. Next section is elements. Now, these are kind of like clip art in a way. If you have any stickers, objects, shapes, icons, um, you know, you can also put the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter logos here, uh, different little stickers that you're, you are going to be using routinely in your print marketing. Videos, not really going to be using in print marketing, but you can upload videos to your assets as well. And last but not least, files. So now that we have our assets uploaded and updated, we can go back to templates, the first tab at the very top left. Now there are going to be several options to choose from. You wanna choose one that works best for you and your situation and generating leads like, for example, door knocking. So no matter if you're making a test piece with me, reviewing the recording later, uh, creating a real piece, or creating a different type of piece, 
all the functionalities are going to be the same. So you just make them work for you and your piece. But you're going to see under listings, there's going to be different categories like coming soon, for sale, just listed, just sold. You can use all of these and print them out and to generate more leads. Under buyer, you're gonna have some information about Keller Mortgage. So you can also print that out and pass that out. Under lead generation, you're gonna find event invitations. So if your office is having a buyer seminar, you'll also find the KW app. So the consumer app. So once you choose your category, I'm gonna go with for sale. You'll see all the different types that command has to offer. So today I'm gonna to be choosing a flyer, but you can also choose door hangers, postcards, bifolds, trifolds. And you'll also see there are different sizes and orientations listed in these categories. So H would be horizontal, V would be vertical. And as you choose different categories on the left, these types along the top will also change. So let's click flyers letter to narrow down the pieces here. And once you choose your option, hover over it and click the red use button that appears in the top right. Now that you're within the design editor, you'll see a little bubble to open the pages menu. Since that was recently updated, they have this bubble to point it out that it's no longer out in front of your face. It is collapsed under this button in the bottom right corner. So I'm just going to skip that. And then I'm also going to zoom in so that you can see what I'm working on. And you'll find that at the bottom right as well. At the very top, you'll find file. This is where you can save and I do recommend saving frequently. Show grid, show ruler, show bleed and check the format. Right off the bat, I do suggest renaming the design. So you may have some sort of naming convention for yourself like FS for for sale. And then the address. And then maybe the type. Along the top here, right underneath the title, you'll see different selections for editing the piece. And on the left, you'll see more categories to edit as well. So starting at the top of the document, we're just gonna go through and edit each of the pieces one by one from top to bottom. So for your property, you can double click to edit any field. Just gonna change that number. Again, double click to edit and manually typing within my piece. Again, double click to edit. so that the first line is done. Moving on down the piece, the next part is the main picture. 
So I want to click to select. So you see it then outlines in blue. Now for this particular piece, um, for this example, let's say I am uh, advertising someone else's listing within my office. I have gotten permission from my broker and that agent. So I'm creating this flyer on their behalf. So to find the pictures, if it is a real listing in your office, you can actually go to the KWLS section here. You can then search for the listing by address, MLS number, KWLS ID, agent, or even co-agent. And once you have that typed in, you wanna press enter on your keyboard. And then you wanna find your listing. And then click select. And you'll see all of the pictures from KWLS are syndicating over in this first tab. And on the second tab, you'll have listing details. So for this picture I have selected, there's actually a couple of different ways you can get these over to your design. The first is having your piece selected and then hovering over the image you want and clicking replace. That is one of the most simplest ways to do so. Another way is to click and drag over to the piece and release. And you'll see the site kind of working with the red along the top. And you'll see this one is a little cut off here. So I'm just gonna click this reposition at the top and then click and drag where I want that to go. And then click done to apply. Now the third option is if the listing isn't in MLS and therefore KWLS just yet, but you do have the pictures from the photographer on your computer, you can go to images and then add to upload those from your computer and use them right away. So moving on down the piece, next is the price. Now I showed you one way to edit fields at the very top is just by double clicking and typing the information. That works really well for the fields that already have the um, headers on them, like what they are, like bed, bath, square foot. But price doesn't have that. So what I'm gonna do is go back to KWLS and then this time go over to listing details. There you can find the price. And with the price selected, just as the, we did with the picture, you can click this replace icon, which is the two arrows that form a circle to replace that immediately. Now you can still edit this as well. So if you want to remove the US dollars, you can double click and manually delete. But the reason we don't do that for the fields that already have these signifiers on what they are here is because you notice down in these different fields, they only have the number. So if we were to autofill or replace with this field, it wouldn't have bed or bath or square foot. So it depends on the field on whether or not you want to use listing details under KWLS. Moving on down, next is the address. So I'm going to click to select. 
have that blue outline, find the property address, and replace. Now notice this does not have the state. So again, you may want to double click to edit and manually type that in. Moving on down, let's do these pictures next. I'm gonna flip back over to the photos tab. And this is a picture of a kitchen. So let's replace with a kitchen. And because I don't have that one selected, I'm gonna drag and drop. Perfect. And let's find another photo and drag and drop. And let that load. Perfect. Next is the description. So you see it has, it's bulleted out here for just for the example, the template. But as it pulls over from KWLS, it may be a paragraph, which is fine too. So I'm gonna flip back over to listing details and the property description is gonna be at the very bottom and I'm gonna click to replace. Now you will also see let me zoom out for you here. This is a very large description here. You'll see the blue outline continues down past the page. So staying zoomed out, just so you can see what I'm doing fully, I'm gonna hover my mouse so that it changes to this white crosshair with arrows and click and drag and reposition. Now doing this, you will also see the blue grid lines pop up. And this is so that you can snap it to the center or matching up with the other elements within the piece. Now I'm gonna zoom back in. And I'm also going to show you if you double click to edit this piece and then highlight all, so I'm actually going to click or press on my keyboard control A to highlight all so that it highlights well past the field as well. But here you can also at the very top, change your text, change your font, change the size. You can bold, change the formatting here color. So different options pop up with different selections here. I'm going to move this up a little bit more. There we go and center it. Perfect. Now you'll also see without having any text selected, but having this field selected, I have a few other options. I'm gonna decrease the spacing here. Whoa, too much. So that this all fits in nicely. And then you can also click in the gray space to deselect. Next is our logo. So I'm gonna click, now this, piece is really nice because it does find that it is looking for a logo. So it pops open my logos and my assets so that I can replace really easily. Now, because I have a white background, I'm not gonna use my white logo, but I can use the black and gray or the traditional red, black and gray. And let me center that up. There it goes. And finally, my information on the bottom right. I'm going to click the headshot. And that's going to be under images. 
This matches up with the assets. And then my assets. And then click to replace. Again, you can also reposition here if you wish. So if you want to make that bigger, move that around, you can. And done to apply that change. Now, this is where you're going to be using the text options from your assets. So I'm going to click my name, come over to text, and again, my assets, and replace my name. Now, the second field is going to be similar to the bed, bath, square footage. It has two pieces of information here. So what I like to do, saves me some clicks, is to replace with one of the pieces. So I have my phone here and I have my email. So I'm gonna replace with my phone first. And then I'm gonna move that up. And another way to move is actually by having the field selected and using the buttons on your keyboard to move that. So a couple different ways. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this field. This is going to keep the same size, same font, and paste it right below it. So now I can move that one in line, you know, where I want it. I can even left and right move it on my keyboard. And now I'm going to replace with the second piece of that information, my email. It looks like I need to move it up just a hair. Oops. There you are. Next piece is the app. Instead of the app, I'm going to use my website. And there you have it. Oh, and it placed it my. That's okay. Um, another thing that pops up once you click a field is the delete this uh, selection of icons at the top right. And delete, aka remove, is the little trash can. So now that we have our first print marketing piece ready to go, you now have a couple of different options. One, and remember file save, you can download as a PDF to print at your own home. You can also print this at your office. So by clicking download, PDF for printing as well. You can also download this PDF to then send it to a store like Staples, Office Depot, Office Max, and they can print for you. I believe uh, UPS and FedEx also do that as well. You can, yes, use this as an email as well. So for that, I would recommend changing that to JPEG and using that JPEG and an email or even a social post. But since this class is just for print marketing, we're assuming that you're printing it and not emailing it out. But that would be the PDF for printing option. Now, the other way to print is to click this order print button here at the top. What this will do is it uses command and the WeBrand editor that we're in now to send to a printer and have it sent to you. So you have print options for different countries, paper thickness. Of course, this will depend on what piece you have open your number of copies. You 
can choose all the different options here. See the subtotal and continue on to the second and third steps. So now that we're done here, I'm gonna click done. It'll auto save it for you again and take you back to the designs home screen. Now for the second half of this class, we're gonna go over how to do a direct mail piece. So we're gonna to head to campaigns, which is the little megaphone icon. Again, you can always click the red square with a white KW to expand the name of the applets. And then we're gonna click create campaign in the top right and select direct mail. Now, just like any other campaign you'll see, you do need to enter a name, um, watch your character count. Actually, let's change that to Lane. Oh wait, I didn't even type main. And this is a postcard. And choose a goal. Now, choosing a goal, is not the end all be all. You can just simply choose other. Um, KWRI uses this just for some analyzing on what people are using postcards for. So choose what best um, fits with your design here or campaign, I should say. So I'm gonna choose advertise listing and click create. You will then see KWLS 2.0 pop out from the right hand side. And this is where we're going to find our listing again. You can search by property address, MLS number, or listing agent here. Now, I do also suggest changing the status and show to all. Now for me specifically, because I don't have any listings, um, that's how I'll want to select my listings. But just in case your listings aren't showing up on your main page, you can find them by changing these two to all. So here's this listing that I'm working with. So I'll click select. And this is the campaign wizard here. Have all your steps on the left. You have your preview on the right where you can flip between the front and the back. Going through each section, you can click to drop down. You can change the name again. You can change the goal if you wish. Click save to collapse that. You can change your listing if you'd like. Next section, you can add your content. Now you can upload a design as well. So instead of a flyer, if you did a postcard, you can upload that here. But for today's example, I'm gonna show you the selected template because it's super easy, love it. So for the template, I'm going to choose one of these four options depending on what size and what theme you want. You have a four by six, nine by six, 11 by six modern and 11 by six contemporary. So I'm just gonna leave it at the four by six. And then your listing address auto fills here. Got your price. You wanna choose your listing status that shows up here. Bedrooms, auto populates, bathrooms, and description. Now, of course, you can change this information as well. 
you can both um, toggle the little up and down arrows or oh, I guess you can't type in, maybe I'm in the wrong browser here. Again, you wanna watch your character count though. This one that came over is a little too large. So I'm gonna start deleting some. Almost. There we go. And then it is noted that the description will be pr printed on the back. So if you pop over to the back, you can see that right away. Then we're gonna choose our listing photo. So by default, it'll have you upload an image, but you can tab over to use the listing images. And I'm gonna choose the front of the house. Now, even though these have the little exclamation marks saying that they're low resolution, they can still be used. Keller Williams does recommend that the image should at least be 300 DPI. 1200 by 1800 pixels with a format of JPEG or PNG. You can remove, you can replace. Underneath that is gonna be your information. So you wanna make sure that this is all up to date. This is pulling from your marketing profile, which is why you want it to be up to date there as well. Then you can click save and use if you want to use that image. And you'll then see that section now has a green check mark. That's going to be the goal for every section. So moving to the next one, you want to confirm your office information. My office name is always a little too long. State doesn't always auto populate, so you want to select that. Neither does zip, so you want to type that in and click verify and confirm. Now you have a green check mark there. <clears throat> now, even though these last two do already have green check marks, I highly suggest checking those out as well. So what targeting does by default, it's, it's gonna select local targeting. So around this listing address. Now, because this is lead generate with command class, that's what we're gonna leave it as, but underneath is where you'll see target my database. So if you want to send a postcard to your database and those who have addresses, you can select that there. Once you've verified this information, click save. Then for the last section, let's click to drop that down. Select your quantity. And select the postage class. Now there will be one option for this type of postcard, but if you choose any of the others, there may be additional choices there. Unfortunately, you cannot change the position of the image selected for the front. So if you did want to alter that ahead of time, you know, maybe for mine, let me go down there, um, you know, cut out this pack rat in the driveway, you would want to do that before you upload. You're welcome. Now let me toggle back to the front here. So like see how it cuts off the top. I would wanna edit my photo ahead of time, you know, cutting out the grass here so that it changes the preview. Now you wanna check the front, you wanna check the back. Underneath the preview on that right-hand side is going to be an option for a QR code. 
Now, this is not a QR code that you have already made. This is allowing command to insert one for you. So let me go to the back. If you decide to turn this on, and you would do so by just toggling this tracking right here to turn it green. This will add a QR code to your postcard. Once scanned by the recipient, they will be taken to a page where their contact information is captured and tracked back to this campaign. <clears throat> so they must manually scan it. It's not 100% going to be scanned, but if they do, now, and this says landing page assigned, but you can also send it to a page on your website. Once they do scan that QR code, this is whatever page that they would be sent to. <coughs> so if you did want to create a landing page for more information on this listing, you can set that up ahead of time. You know, I have a few here. So that that QR code points to that landing page. But if you just wanted to, you know, point them to, you know, download my app or the homepage or the contact us or even the mortgage calculator, you know, you can point it to whatever page you have on your website as well. Now, review this information. You know, you may even want to click save draft, come back to it the next day with fresh eyes. Because once you click this configure targeting, you cannot come back. And I'll say that again. So once you have all of this information entered and you have all green check marks, you may want to click save draft and come back tomorrow with fresh eyes to make sure that this information is 110% correct. Because once you click configure targeting, you cannot come back to this page. And before I click that, here's where that QR code shows up in the top right of the back of the postcard. So, I'll go ahead and click configure targeting. Are you sure? Yes. So this step number two is where you can update the targeting for your campaign. So right now we have it set at 203, like we chose on the last screen. You can narrow it down by property type, you know, number of bedrooms. Let's see, this one's a five bed. So I'm gonna advertise to four beds. Square footage. Year built. So I wanna, I only want to send to people with houses built in the last 21 years. Year last sold. and last sold for. Last but not least is the postage class. If there was a different option for the different types of templates that you used, you could toggle between those here. And this last option is send a copy to company address. We highly recommend you selecting this so that you get a copy to and hovering over this I in a circle is going to verify that address. This will also um, tell you when they were sent out, you know, what they finally look like. So highly recommend sending a copy to yourself. After all of this information is up to date, you can also see the map here. Oops, let me move this. Uh, can you get a copy of this recording? Yes, it's going to be up on our YouTube channel later today. And that's youtube.com slash Scott Leroy marketing. If you subscribe to that, you'll get an email with the video.
You can get to this page from the last page by clicking configure targeting in the top right corner. And yep, you can get to this uh, second step, configure targeting by clicking that big blue button in the top right corner. So another way to alter, because this was all automatically done by choosing the different parameters here on the left. Another way you can change where this is going to is by drawing yourself. So if you want to draw, like, let's say I only want to do south of 75. You know, probably should have stayed within the border, but that's okay. Within that, it will then also update the number of homes to target if it's a different number than what you selected. But you can draw as well. Now let's show you the other option is polygon. So draw is freehanded. Like you saw, I went along the 75 corridor there. Radius is what it's selected at now. So it's gonna choose the listing address and go out in a complete circle, which you can see once you're zoomed out enough. It's just a circle. Polygon is a shape. So if you didn't wanna draw, if you did just want to do It's not liking this, how far out I'm zoomed. Now, maybe best used in Mozilla Firefox. Let me reset that and try again real quick. Click to start shape. No, Chrome isn't liking this today. That's okay. The polygon is just a square. So you can start that and then <clears throat> do straight lines. So I'm sorry, it doesn't have to be a square, but it can be. Um, use straight lines to draw your shape. Now, once you have all of your parameters set and your map's good to go, you can click next. You'll see the previews start to build here. You can see your order summary here. And there it is. If you do need to see a larger preview, you can click this red text here and it'll open up in a new tab. You'll see your postage and the order total. Now, if you submit your order before 3 p.m. on a business day, your mailers will go to production that same day in a fulfillment center nearest to your targeted area. Your cards will be inserted into the USPS mail stream within two business days. So since it does use USPS, this is only for the United States at this time. Your mailers are estimated to arrive in mailboxes of the recipients within four to six business days. Once the order is submitted, you will be provided a more accurate estimate. You'll enter your email address, card number, expiration, and security code to be able to make a payment. And then you should also receive the receipt via email once that has gone through. I will also recommend you check out the terms of service for Real Mailers. Real Mailers is the um, company that Command and this editor uses to mail these out. Um, clicking that link at the bottom opens it up in a new tab. So you have more details of all of the different timelines. But that is it for class today. If I didn't answer your question, or if you think of a question later, feel free to reach out to us. Again, our website is scottleroymarketing.com. In the chat, at the very bottom is where you'll find our contact information. 
and our YouTube is youtube.com slash Scott Leroy marketing. I also posted that in the chat. That is where you can go to subscribe and get alerts for all of our videos that we upload. And as soon as this video is done importing and uploading and encoding, what have you, it'll be on here later this afternoon. And specifically under videos, it'll be the first one. But as always, thank you for joining and hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful holiday. And we'll see you tomorrow for the command overview.